Hey guys, what's going on? So this video is for my car sales professional. So if you are currently selling cars, a marketing manager or a dealer principal, listen to this one closely. I was invited by Trade Pending to talk about how car dealerships can use TikTok to sell more cars and take more trade-ins. It was quite a challenge, honestly, to go through everything in less than 30 minutes. So at any moment, if you have any questions for me, drop them in the comments section below. And if you're listening to the podcast on Spotify, Apple or Google, feel free to send me an email at team at autobahnacademy.com. So I've been teaming up with car salespeople willing to drive leads from TikTok lately. And some of them are even selling more than 10 units per month on a consistent basis. So in this video, I'll be sharing the things I've learned, mistakes to avoid, and a couple of tips and tools to get you started with TikTok. I spent the last 15 years helping car dealerships create a better business online learning from the best in the industry. The real question is, how can I help you do better in this fast-paced environment? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me as I explore, learn, and share marketing strategies you can apply in your store right now. My name is Mark, and welcome to the Autobahn Academy podcast. Again, my name is Alex. I'm the design and marketing manager for Trade Pending. And again, Mark is the founder of Autobahn Digital. He's been gracious enough to talk to us about the future of uh, digital marketing, specifically in the TikTok uh, platform, uh, as we know. Um, did the digital edge is, is bleeding ever so much in the automotive industry and getting that little bit of leverage and a little bit of, uh, edge on, on your competition helps. And, uh, especially with the, the next generation coming up and becoming first time car buyers and whatnot, it's great to meet your customers where they're at. And this seems to be one of the platforms, one of the most po popular platforms for them to use and utilize. And we're just going to still mark a little bit about that. Uh, so Mark, uh, why don't you go ahead and, and hit the next slide for me. Yeah, you mind if I just uh, put that here? All good. Awesome. There yeah. You. So uh, obviously, we're recording this webinar, uh, and uh, we will have the ability to ask questions later on if you have any specific questions. Uh, but if we run out of time or don't get to it, please send us the questions anyways. Uh, we'll go ahead and respond to you in an email or the follow up email tomorrow where the webinar recording will be living. Uh, feel free to go ahead, Mark. Next slide. Uh, as always, we will be sending out this uh, webinar with a PDF version of it, so you can actually uh, follow us on social media, but also check out this uh, slide deck and you can find cool things like the inventory sourcing checklist where we have 50 different or over 50 uh, ways of checking out inventory sourcing. Obviously, that's still a pain point with uh, a lot of our uh, automotive friends in, in the industry right now, but also because we got tons of swag and raffles and they're coming up all the time. So if you like our wobbly birds or really comfy t-shirts, uh, follow us on social and you'll be able to get into those fun raffles. Mark, please. There you go. All right. So, uh, Mark, so really, first off, um, let's talk a little bit about just generally TikTok. For people that might not know uh, what TikTok is and, and what gives TikTok itself uh, kind of their, their benefit over other platforms. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to thank you and uh, Trade Pending for inviting me for this webinar. I've been uh, having a lot of conversation around TikTok uh, with my clients, car dealers, automotive clients, you know, and I think um, it, now is the moment to seize the opportunity because I see it's getting harder and harder to grow on TikTok, like in the car space, because as competition grows, uh, it's going to be more saturated, just like we're seeing on Instagram, Facebook, where the boat is sale, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm excited to uh, talk to you guys about this today. And um, hopefully I can share a little bit about how to use TikTok, what it is today, like what's the current state of this platform? Is it social media? Is it entertainment? Uh, we'll, we'll dive deeper into all of this uh, during this webinar. So thanks again for having me. Our pleasure. We, we love having you. And uh, obviously, when we're looking to help our, our automotive clients out, we want to make sure that we're giving them the most fresh and up-to-date information possible. So again, thank you for coming on. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, do you want me to um, jump into for the next slide? I can. Yeah, uh, let's go. Let's go for you. it. Right Perfect. On. So just before we start um, this webinar, I, would I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about my story. So I sold my first car back in uh, 20, uh, 2007. It was a red uh, Volkswagen Beetle. And, um, you know, it's it was a wonderful experience I had to have. Uh, I, was, I didn't 
I then went to Audubon, um, to Northwood University in, in Florida um, and completed my studies. I worked for GM, Audi of America, and two major um, ad agencies and SaaS company in the automotive space where I got to learn a ton. Um, yeah. I also had the, uh, the opportunity to, <laughs> to have uh, people trust me somehow with managing millions of dollars in ad spend. And obviously with that amount of money, you can test and learn a, uh, a ton. I, uh, I, I placed advertising for, uh, car makers like Ford, Nissan, General Motors, BMW, Honda, and, uh, some others as well. Yeah, I but, think I've heard I of those, and, a couple of those car brands there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, yeah, it, they're not so much impl implemented in North America, but you know, it's getting there, you know, and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you, you know, I, I working with dealers, working with automotive, automotive clients, uh, such as car makers. I just saw that sometimes marketing and digital marketing is not always well understood, right? Uh, we, we take actions actions just because we have to be there but there's a science to it so i decided to create a platform where like automotive dealerships can go and learn state of the art or you know really really amazing digital marketing strategies and tactics they can apply to their store because in the end all dealerships have different realities uh geo types of buyers brands you know all that kind of, of stuff. So, you know, I just I, have to ask I, for, I just, for myself. Uh, so Audubon, have you, have you driven on the Audubon? Was it, you know, part of that, <laughs> no, uh, coming up with the name, just speed? Not and, even, and... I, I know. <laughs> no, I, I, I guess like if you want to go for a tacky analogy, said so like, if you're, if you're good, you can drive in a fast lane and like, you know, uh, you know, uh, overtake the competition. But I, like I said the other day, I didn't get like the perfect answer for this. But I, I just, I'm a big fan of, uh, I'm a big car nut since I, I was three. Uh, always been in the auto industry as much as I'm trying to get out of it. It just always pulls me back. So I guess figured I would stop fighting, you know? And, um, you know, I think I that's, you, that's the nut, case you, for you, a lot of- you're sitting, you're sitting there in an Audi R8. I mean, that's definitely an yeah. Audubon worthy vehicle. So right off. Yeah, I know. That's when I was uh, working with uh, Audi USA. I had a chance to travel the United States with the best Audi cars at that time. So it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, that's me here at the uh, Palm Beach Auto Show. I was one of the captains. Um, and, you know, that was me selling cars and uh, doing events for General Motors for some time. Oh, so yeah. So I, long I, history I, being an automotive. Yeah. I, you know, I, I love the industry. It's so wide. It's so unique. And uh, I, I just think it marries really well with my obsession about digital marketing. And mm -hmm. in the end, I, I see automotive as high ticket e-com, uh, whereas we buy stuff at like uh, for hundreds of dollars on Amazon and everything else. But okay. we're now more and more buying cars online and we have to get good at this. So hopefully we can talk about how TikTok <laughs> get Yeah, how does TikTok play into that. That, uh, that, that, that industry? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm going to share a few slides in the future, but for me, I auto quoted myself here, but I really think it's a cheat code in the auto industry right now, because just the amount of reach you can have right now, uh, especially with, you know, with you, with new used cars, finance, the, the way you can interact with people, it is unmatched right now. It's not something that's happening on like any other media right now. Uh, it's not happening on YouTube. It's not happening on Google, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and the others, right? And especially not traditional like radio, uh, newspapers, or TV. So I'd like to see uh, with you guys, uh, you know, what is TikTok? Uh, what can it bring to dealerships? Because that's the whole question. So how can this help me and my business get ahead? You know, it's all fun and games, trying to see like play on social media, but you know, in the end you want to do this to generate more, more sales. So I want to make sure you know, which common mistakes you can avoid. I I've been browsing this app for some time now. I do, I don't call it coaching because it's not one, one way. Um, it's just trying to, I'm, I get with a group of people that are using TikTok, sharing best practices and say, you know what? what failed this week, what failed this month and what had like really good success. And we're like, you know, learning as a group. 
And I think it's pretty cool because it's not always about advertising and putting dollars. TikTok is giving us an opportunity to grow organically. Whereas, you know, most media right now, like especially with Facebook, if I do, I'll do a lot of comparisons, but just to make sure you understand. Like Facebook, when you're sharing with your organic posts or your, um, you know, your friends as car dealers, you're most likely reaching tops 10% of your like base. So if you got 20,000 likes on your page, you maybe you'll reach 2,000 people. TikTok is the opposite. You might have 2,000 followers. You might reach 150,000 people. Um, you know, so it's a great opportunity. Just a quick overview if you're not familiar with the app. Um, it's really different. It's, it's really, um, and like for me, it's entertainment versus social. It's not about how much you interact with others, like other, like your friend, the friends of yours, but mostly with anyone or any, like everyone at this, at any given point in time. Um, you know, it's been a challenge for car dealerships because we're used to advertise with our products, but you know, with short form video content, it's creator specific. It, it, it's built around the people and not so much about the product. So you got to learn how to do this as well. So let me just jump in and give you a, like a rough understanding on how like important is TikTok before we get, you know, we, we jumped in more details and how you can apply it to your store. So I think like if there's any stat that makes sense, TikTok has reached 1 billion users four times faster than Facebook. So if that doesn't ring like any bell in your in your head or how much you got to jump on this one, it, it, it's just crazy because it, it, it's just gone viral and it's not only with teens. The, um, you know, the demography is really, really changing over time. And this is why it's more it's, it's more important than ever that you, as car dealerships, uh, jump on this app right now, like yesterday, if you ask me. But you know, 131 million U.S. based users. That is so many. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And w what's happening? Because I have the chance to have like some friends with like they got teens as kids or preteens, so mm -hmm. 10, 12, 14 years old. And these guys, they started using the platform and parents are picking up the habit. Instead of being like, oh no, so don't be on TikTok, they create an account as well and they are on TikTok now too. So mm -hmm. I, I just thought I wanted to share this because that's what I hear most when I talk about TikTok. It's just, it's only for, for the teens, kids, right? Yeah. For the kids, you know, but kids grow older and they, inf they influence their parents too. But mm -hmm. let me let me share it, that with you, okay? So take a moment to, <laughs> you know, to read that data as I catch my breath a little mm -hmm. bit, you know? So, like, nearly one-third of Americans right now are logging into TikTok, and 67% of them are older than 20-year-old. So these are all potential car buyers, mm -hmm. people with money. If you really go for like the 30 to 50, which is a good chunk of people with some buying power, it's still 25 to 30 percent, depending on where you stop, like 25 to 45. So like that and like the 30 plus demography is really the one that's picking up speed right now. It has a tr like the most growth within the all the age groups you see here, 30 to 39. And these are the people with money, cars, needs, you know. You know, you so said something this is that, that uh, rings true is that children do tend to influence their parents. You know, it mm -hmm. might not be uh, like, hey, uh, I saw this guy on TikTok and he wants you to buy this specific vehicle, but maybe it's just like a better general feeling about a specific OEM or something like that. Something that, you know, oh, uh, that new specific OEM. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. And just that table kind of discussion really brings people uh, or sorry, um, uh, a company more top of mind. So I think that's that's kind of instrumental. And you made another very valid point. You know, these people are getting older. So some of them start start driving. So, you know, when you get, um, you know, maybe your a brand new car isn't your first 
uh, vehicle, but you start to build some sort of brand loyalty from your first vehicle. So that can continue on through the ages, yeah. and that could be like a lifetime of uh, loyalty there. Yeah, yeah, of course. And remember, at some point, we said the same thing about Facebook. Like back in 2005, 2006, 07, like Facebook was for college students. But we all know the story here. And this thing is growing four times faster, you know? And they 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 got a precedent as well. They were basing everything they were doing on what Facebook did. And they're not replicating the same mistakes and they're doing like the same wins. People like managing this 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 company and the, the app itself are really, really smart, making great decisions in terms of marketing because obviously they want to monetize the thing, right? So I wanted to draw a just quick slide on how to compare with those two, like Facebook and Instagram. I, I like to compare compare the two because in ter- w- w- when we think about social media, these are the two we're using the most in automotive. Although I see, I still see some car dealers skipping on those two Facebook and Instagram, which is a mistake, I think. But you know, like at this point, might as well jump on TikTok if you're not doing anything. I think, you know. It's like the key differences. It's centered around um, video. It's a much simpler app as well. Uh, it's like the the star of TikTok is the creator. Some twenty year olds are having like eighty million, hundred millions of followers, not because they pushed a brand, but they pushed um, like uh, they they pushed themselves as an individual. So they like people just tend to connect with people. So. This is the main challenge for car dealerships. The old tricks, talking about like promos, the cars itself, it's it's not cutting it. Every time I see a post from a car dealership that's promoting, talking about a specific car or promotion, it always gets like no regional likes aside of everyone working in the dealership. And I think it's sad because it's just a lost opportunity to draw attention to our to our business in you know in a way where this asset lives more than one day whereas if you post on facebook and instagram your post is done tomorrow on tiktok your video could keep going for like two three weeks depending on the reactions and this piece of content you can reuse it uh you know when following up with customers email sequences like opportunities are really really deep when you're doing that so you know, I think an important point uh, with this is that you're right. It's it's an easier app, but it's also it's video creation that you could, you know, share out to other platforms as well. So you don't have to just yep. say, oh, this is a Facebook video. It only needs to live on Facebook. Now your TikTok videos can go onto Facebook. They can go onto Instagram. They can go onto LinkedIn as well. So don't think of it just as like silos, right? This can all work nope. together. It, like it, that's a great point because it, it could be like the start like the the foundation of, of one video because the app is so intuitive and easy to use when creating a video but these videos you can push them exactly to instagram reels facebook reels now um you know youtube shorts if you want and uh it's it's pretty impressive there are some tools you can like totally automate the thing so it it gives you thousands and potentially hundred thousands of like hundred thousands of views um you know every day or every week you know it's like it's something we never had before and i i'm just under the impression it's not gonna last at some point brands are gonna jump in so hard that it's gonna turn into facebook in a couple of years with just like 40 percent, 50 percent ads and then the rest is gonna be organic but it's gonna shrink the potential we're gonna have as local businesses um, yeah, w- one thing I want to mention before I jump to, uh, the algorithm, like the, the way TikTok is so satisfying, it's so good as an app. If you've been using it, you know, it's, it's molding itself to what you like and what you feel. So, you know, it's, it, it's really, it's, it's public knowledge, but in, aside of being a social graph app, which is sharing with you everything that your friends are doing, like Facebook. Um, TikTok is sharing videos with you based on your interests. 
Let me explain. Hey guys, real quick before we keep going. If you are a car salesperson and you'd like to join a private group of like-minded people look looking to dominate TikTok in the auto industry, check out the TikTok Closers private group. You can follow the link below to apply. Now back to the webinar. So the algorithm, uh, like the TikTok algorithm is much more complex than the Facebook one. It just listens or watches you as you like you browse the app. It's super powerful. It's a little bit scary, but it's also super powerful. And it takes many, like many factors in consideration, including past video interactions, watch time, hashtags, and even facial recognition. So TikTok knows if you're laughing at something. And I've 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 been doing the test, and you can try to, you can start watching videos on a specific subject and watch your feed or your for you page change towards those kind of videos so let's say for me i i i, I speak french and english so I'll, I'll watch both languages but when i start watching a couple videos in french my feed is gonna at least gonna turn 100 french and if you watch i don't know like motorcycle videos your feeds turning into motorcycle feed video it's crazy you can do it in real time try it it's quite funny and um you know you can do it so it's it, this is why it gets so addicting and why people just browse the app like over 45 minutes and on average every day the ones that log in every day is 45 minutes plus so you know it's really really powerful and that's all good and all but is there anyone that's consuming content around cars if that's something you're wondering I was I was just searching for um you know everything that's related to cars trucks SUVs content and I could find I I I admit I I stopped it, it was probably more than this but 130 billion combined views on these uh, these hashtags alone keep in mind the the hashtags only includes the video that used the hashtags so there's more um just people are just posting stuff without hashtags too so I just thought with tens of millions of views in the automotive um, every day, I, I think it makes sense for us to at least try, you know? So you utilizing hashtags, especially, you know, this is a good list of them. Do you really find that that, that really does help uh, grow your, your organic growth even more, just like that cross-pollination uh, using hashtags? Like how pivotal is it for you to really get on a, a good hashtag and try and own that space? Or is there such a thing as like owning a hashtag or... Please. Uh, owning an hashtag except yours because you're the only one posting is, it's. It, it, I think it's irrelevant. It's uh, like at, at some point you got to choose. You can read different things about how to use hashtags. I think it's good to test. But what I've been focusing on with like a specific group of people, like car salespeople, is that we've been like focusing on local hashtags versus, like, let's say it, it's cool to say, you know, I got the car hashtag. But it's too generic. It's too general. It's like buying. Uh, it's like buying the, the the keyword on Google cars for sale. So okay, but no, you got to be a little bit more specific if you want results. If you, we, we have a yeah, question cool. uh, from uh, from Justin Fell, uh, who's a digital marketing manager. Uh, he was yeah. asking, is copying and pasting hashtags from successful posts um, like a smart move uh, for future posts to, to get like similar kind of engagement? Yeah, but it's it's not um, it's not a guarantee you will perform as as good as the other video. If that makes sense. There's more than hashtags. It's not like hashtags on on TikTok is not the act because always keep in mind that TikTok is gonna the whole algorithm is gonna read your transcript and push your video as such. So you can try to push it for people following some hashtags because you can follow hashtags. Um, but like some people want to make it the end game, whereas it's a, it's a cool thing to have like two or three hashtags, but don't bank on only this to drive a video. Let's say you see a video that has like 400 K views. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm expecting 400 K maybe I'm, I'm guessing it's not your point, but I'm just, I just want to make it like a super crazy example. It's not only about hashtag. It's going to be about the hook, the content, what you're saying, early engagement, 
you know, all that kind of stuff. Like yeah, using the algorithm, the algorithm like it really wins, right? I mean, that's what TikTok's known for is that very strong and, and listening algorithm uh, of all the things that you mentioned earlier, topics, how much time you yeah. spend on it, whatnot. So the hashtag really is just like a mere suggestion going back and forth, not really yeah. uh, the driving if, point. If, if you want to go for something that has more weight, uh, like at least what I've been seeing, testing, and understanding is the, um, the watch time. So let's say your video is 20 seconds. The most people, like the, the the higher percentage of people that are gonna watch, twenty five percent, fifty percent, seventy five percent, or to completion, is gonna tell TikTok, you know what, this video is good. People are enjoying it, and you know you should push it a little bit more, because sometimes you'll see just like videos, uh, seven second videos, you know, with text, but it takes you ten seconds to read it. But TikTok will actually take in consideration if people are replaying your video over and over. And if you are, uh, it increases the, I don't know how to call it, in, in, like inside, but it increased the video score, you know. And uh, it's similar to what uh, YouTube has been doing for years. Like if people uh, are a, dropping off after question. 1% versus 50%. I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, actually, Zach uh, has a quick question he put forth. Um, do you know if TikTok uh, has realized like if some certain dealerships are consistently posting and um, there might be like some sort of like shadow banning that goes on? Is that something that you have noticed uh, with TikTok at all? Uh, no, but there's, you know, there, there's, there's something about shadow bans on like, yes, I know, I know TikTok will limit your reach as much as like, uh, by the way, the other social media will do the same. Mm -hmm. um, if you're mentioning specific keywords or trying to push some information. I know for a fact that if you're, it's not only, it's not only me, it's documented. It's, it's just, if you push, let's say, I don't know, like uh, click on a website or click on our, uh, my link, uh, link in bio, people don't like it, uh, but not, not people don't like it. The app doesn't like it because mm -hmm. TikTok wants to keep you, keep you inside of TikTok. Uh, really Not quickly, I did, I did just away. want to mention, uh, I, I, we do realize that it's uh, 228, but this is such an incredible and, and interesting topic. Uh, so we'll, we'll continue going on. Uh, and of course, we'll have this recording sent out to everybody who's registered for this uh, tomorrow. But if you need to hop off, we totally understand. Uh, this is such an interesting topic that we wanted to make sure we hit all these and answered all these questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, like I told you, like, yeah, like doing 30 minutes is just super short. There's so much to like things to learn about this. It's important too. So yeah. Uh, by the way, thank you for your question, Justin and Zach. Um, like, it's not about shadow banning. It's just like limiting some video reach. I know they're doing this if you're reposting the same video. <coughs> Sorry about that. And uh, I, you know, there's, and, and sometimes they like, They'll test your videos with maybe a hundred people, hundred views, and if it doesn't get any engagement, they're just like your video dies, just like that. Like it's pretty brutal, and this is why I'm saying it used to be easier. It's harder now. It's only gonna get harder. That's what I've been seeing. So, um, quick question. So. Can you advertise on it? Let's say you want to do organic, but can you do ads? So the answer yeah, is yes. And um, it has an ad manager, pretty much like Facebook. Honestly, I think they open like Facebook's ad manager and they copy the whole thing. It's pretty much the same thing, like in, in terms of geo targeting, you know, how you want to do things. The only real difference is the format of the ad itself. It's got to be video versus potentially images, carousels, you know, messenger ads. It's only right now, at least. It's you're pushing a video and you can either create a video that's specific to ads so it doesn't appear on your feed, or you can use what they call Spark ads, uh, which is, let's say you got a video that's responding really well, lots of engagement, um, and you, you you feel like it could be a, a an ad of itself. You can try to, you can use Spark to uh, push this, um, push this ad as well. I'll give you an example. So normal, Examples of TikTok, um, I wanted to take a few examples that are related to how to's and education because, um, you know, hashtags around learning something on TikTok have more than 15 billion views so far. And if you look up learn talk, like hashtag learn talk, it's really a thing. You can just follow uh, some really, really smart people sharing life advice, business advice, 
car buying tips too with lots of views like car buying tips have like hundreds and some have millions of views so people are like car buyers are engaging with tiktok to gather this information and just to give you a heads up a heads up from google itself like the gen z right now which is the earlier generation might be not in the market yet But these people, right, like the, 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 this group of people now are looking into TikTok when searching something versus Google. Like they're using TikTok more than Google right now. Just to give you an example. And it should show you like what kind of trend is going on right now. So I see there's a few um, questions. I don't know if that's the right uh, comments. Okay. So I wanted to take a few examples about OEMs attacking TikTok. So pretty much all car makers are advertising right now. And I wanted to, you know, as, as car makers are making some noise, you really want to be there as selling points or, you know, at, at, at like at your, for your local leadership to be there to gather up this, uh, the, the, these car buyers, right? So a few examples of automotive TikTok for car dealerships. I just went ahead and basically search and I, I was able to find like a couple examples really quick so people will engage with with uh, with their users providing choices so would you buy this one or this one can you can you guess this car showing like the behind the curtain what's going on at the, at, at the dealership so if there's a new vehicle here you can uh, basically have a presentation like a walk around let's say in this case that was a 2022 grand cherokee l Uh, when I took this picture, it was pretty, like, it just hit the lots. And then people will interact here. You don't see it so much, but that's important. People ask questions on TikTok, and you can answer with video, which is, the like, the number one hack, if you ask me. Um, because instead of just dropping a comment, you create a video with the name of that person and this question. Um, it's a major dopamine boost for the people asking a question. People actually, like, engaging with the creators and saying, like, you know, thank you. People are really, really happy with this. And it creates a, a new video that goes on your feed. And that question might be asked by one person, but may, maybe 100 people will have the same question. And you're answering all, the, all these people as well. Maybe it's something you, just being in a business, it's it, like it's, it's given for you. But for the, the average car buyer, it may be not, you know. And here I wanted to take... Um, an example about how like offers because I'd still push offers if I was like selling cars on TikTok, but mainly one every 10 videos, perhaps just for a specific unit, like a deal, something and try to watch the engagement. If you turn your feed into like a promo feed, it's not working out. No, I, I, I've seen some examples of this and it's like engagement rate. You, you see it right away. Um, so far, so good. Fantastic examples. Before we jump to the next example, because I want to get more specific, I want you to, I don't know, like take a pen and paper, take a note, the, like screenshot it, I don't care. Just always keep that in mind. If you want to do lead gen on TikTok or any social media, organic or paid, you want to educate your prospect, you want to engage with comments, like answer comments, provide more value. And this is how you position yourself as the expert. It just works. And it works even better in the auto industry because people, let's be honest, they hate us and they don't trust car salespeople. So when you shift the script and flip the script and you, 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 you're being upfront and try to educate your people, people like car buyers will be drawn to you. I can only tell you this because a few of my clients have been applying this specific, like super simple strategy. It's not because it's magical or complicated, just doing the thing. You should see how people are coming in. It's crazy. They're, they're coming in instead of being all defensive. They're like, what do I need? How much does it cost? I'm going to sign it here. It's crazy. I, I've been hearing stories. It's like people are total laydowns. Excuse the term, but you know what I mean? So. Examples of uh, lead gen activities. Oh, I forgot one here. Okay, all good. So I wanted to see how you can actually lead, do lead generation for trade-ins. Right now, if you're not aware, the trend on sell my car on Google has multiplied by 10 
versus three months ago. So people are looking to sell a car <laughs> like right now before if a market crash happens, whatever, right? So this is the time to attack this. And I know trade pending is doing a great job. I was like, the, the only reason I jumped on this call was because I saw the tool and I saw how great it was, honestly. So if you want to, if you want to drive traffic to that, to your website or to your page, these are like a few examples or ideas you could use to create content around. So he, like there was, the, there was a question, should I trade my car if uh, it was next, next frame, but if my trend mission, transmission went out, if my tires are like, you know, done, uh, when is the right time to trade in the car? Uh, how do you go about trading a car? How to get the most money to get like uh, to, 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 to get um, uh, your trade at the dealership? You want to be the person at, like attacking the problem and answering the question, especially if you got shady people around you in your market who are using like weird tactics to pull people in. You want to engage and educate your customers so they don't get caught and they build trust with you instead. Um, can you trade in car with like, yeah, no transmission behind the scenes at a dealership when uh, appraising a car? So people are, you know, looking forward to this, you know, I can see here, but I think it's thousands of views, thousands, thousands of likes too. Um, you just show how you appraise cars, right? And this is amazing media when you're about to follow up with customers, just to explain how you do things. Not yeah. only that, it gives you a better conversation from the get-go, having an educated customer. Oh, yeah. That way it's like oh, not yeah. as combative from the get-go. That's fantastic. That's a great idea. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Think about it. Like, here's how I think about it, let's say, because I'm I, I'm doing a little bit of content on my end, mostly YouTube, but and TikTok is not even fair if you're business to consumer because the volume, the, the addressable market is much larger. But think about it this way. If you're doing these kinds of videos, uh, educating your customers, local buyers, you're pitching your services and business to thousands of people every day. There's no sales team on Earth, like on Earth, that can do that. But with social media, you can do it. So just think about the reach and like the, 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 how evergreen it can be for you. So good news. What I like is that you can position your business locally because that's the challenge for car dealers. You want it, you, it's pretty cool to have, let's say you're in Florida and people are engaging in Seattle. It's, it's nice. It's nice for vanity metrics, but you won't have much business, right? That's the whole thing. But TikTok is attacking this more and more because you can, one, already use local hashtags. And also they're testing a nearby feed. So hopefully pretty soon we're going to have a nearby. So everything that's nearby, every TikTok that has been created near you that's gonna so be groundbreaking when, for the car dealers absolutely yeah it's gonna be groundbreaking for car dealers restaurants you know all local yeah. uh businesses that do business within 20 miles from them most of them most of it at least so i would just not wait until it gets done i would just if i was in a dealership right now i would grow my following right now like yesterday like i said so he, i took this example because I used to work with a guy, his name is Alex. He used to be at Autoplex Custom. Um, and then he helped grew, like, grow this TikTok account. This, what you see here is 1.9 million followers. Uh, Autoplex um, is basically a lifted truck store, as you can see. It's cool because, you know, these are cool trucks. People like it. You know, you'll, t you'll get tons of engagement. But at the same time, I know like 90% of his business was coming to those social media posts and this was from everywhere so if you have something specific or special that you're doing in your store it's a great way it's a great competitive advantage if you're doing something like that on um, on tiktok um like in in their case i wanted to take this uh, example because they were doing a, a joint tiktok effort okay so a lot of people were posting on the same account, okay? So you can have like five person, like five people team logged in on TikTok and post um, on the social media account. And this will grow collectively your reach and reduce your the amount of effort to reach thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. So 
I want you to think about this when you're just starting out in TikTok. So is there any question right now where we, we keep them until the end? Uh, let's keep them until the end. Let's keep, let's keep okay. the question forward. Perfect. Okay, just real quick here. I know I know it's been, um, you know, like one of the questions I keep getting is how, like, what should I create videos about with TikTok? And what I've come up with is pretty much content calendar slash matrix, uh, matrix um, that helps save time and create like hundreds of like ideas really quick. If anyone wants it, you can just try to like uh, reach out to me directly. Uh, my contact is going to be at the end, but it's, it's basically it's really simple. It's just a a spreadsheet with on one row you'll get the topics, and the other row you'll get the your models. So you can basically multiply the the number of ideas and reach two hundred ideas just working on the on this content matrix for like thirty minutes, brainstorming with your team with the guys around you. So it will give you an idea to create more content. I've been um, I've been working with a specific guy. He's doing like like it was back in December, so not even a year ago. He told me, you know what, I want to approach this TikTok thing, and but I'm not sure like how. So we brainstormed a few things and he's in the finance so he's not doing use like he's doing used cars but he's not doing new cars so he started just being really upfront and sharing not customer's name but situation so example he fires up his phone says you know what uh i got a client today he came in he had this score he had uh, repo or you know he had some financial troubles and this is how i helped him get like a I don't know, 10 point interest rate, um, you know, like set up on his used cars. And people, he, he just started to go for stories like daily like this. Not even a week after he started doing it, he started to, like having comments and engagement and he started replying with video with these. So that's all he's been doing since. And he's averaging 10 to 15 cars a month, only from TikTok. And it was so much like leads, he had to build like a landing page and a mini CRM to like plug everything that, that has been coming into like, TikTok. Just to let you know, it, like it's not a guy with uh, like 1 million followers. He has 3,500, but it's so niche and he knows what he's talking about. So people are seeing him as the ultimate expert in this field, which is which has been very good for him. Just a quick uh, quick recap about this. Uh, TikTok organic reach, take advantage. If you're a dealership and you want to, you know, push the message a little bit more, you can, or like you can push ads. It's a minimum of $20, uh, $20 a, a day. Uh, and you can do so with TikTok Spark, like I said. And here's the next uh, 10 steps if you want to get going with TikTok. Whether as if you're a marketing manager right now, if you're a car salesperson, uh, if you're a manager, like a dealer manager, this this is pretty much the same um, function. This this is all you got to do. And I suggest you download the app, uh, sign up, start using your your account. Maybe observe, like get up, like in observation mode for two weeks. Set a date and just start posting. And the good news is, even if you're bad at first, nobody cares because you got no followers. And we're in an era that low production videos have more value than high production value, like videos. It's, it's funny. Like the guy was referring to like for finance, he's not even like editing anything. He's not doing anything fancy. It's full of, uh, and, uh, he's struggling, but it's, it's, it's not authentic. polished, but it, it's authentic. And this is what the, this platform needs. And this is a great news because don't go ahead. And I know you guys don't go ahead and buy a, like a hundred K studio to do tech talks. Don't do that, please. Just don't just buy, <laughs> buy whatever you want, but not that you don't need it. So it, it it's really, it's just about like trying and testing things, consistency. And if you're a Gary V, you know, follower, he's been pushing this for, for years now. And it's true. Do three, four, five videos a day, but it's short. 
and what you want to aim for 30 seconds. So really, when you find something that's worth sharing behind the scenes, a car, a feature you like, take the, uh, like pick up the habit of picking up your phone, film everything you can, post it, get on with your life, basically. So I was talking about consistency. I, I, I just think it's the key because when you do once in a while, uh, it seems to slow down your growth. Whereas you can do, I, I did a crazy test with my personal account the other day. I did a video, I was at Costco and I did like, I did a random video and I started answering all single um, uh, comment as they came in. I ended up doing like, I think 30 videos one day, but I gained a thousand followers in three days in my market using like hashtags. Like I, I, I like I've never seen that before. That's and I'm not like, growth. yeah, I, I know. And it's, it was not like in like for within car dealerships and my potential clients, that was not a goal. I just wanted to see what if I go all in and I do that. Right. And I'm not, let, 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 let's be honest, I'm not pretty and I'm not the one that will draw like a thousands of views just for the, for the sake of it. I'm not checking anything or showing sin, you know, and that's not the goal, but I just wanted to see which, what kind of reach I got. Like within that week span, I got 400,000 views, uh, 10,000 likes. It's more than everything, like every single likes from my social media accounts still forever yeah? combined, you know? So just want to, don't be afraid to test out things and try to be about your constant, like your customer engagement. This is the, the, the true hack. Um, like I said earlier, the, uh, when you reply with video, it's a dopamine hit. Um, when people are watching this, the engagement is really higher because you see the question, but you're curious about what the creator or your business has to say about this question. And, uh, you know, it just, I had some DMS from people I've answered message to thanking me and saying I was really nice. When's the last time someone thanked you on social media because you, sh you share something, right? Imagine being so. a customer and getting a, a comment back directly from your dealership. And all of a sudden that's just building that loyalty to oh, no, the dealership for it, that's invaluable. It's not even fair. Like the guy I'm, <laughs> like, uh, I'm referring to, I always refer back to this because he's grinding it. He's doing it. He's not like, because most people they are like, ah, oh, my hair don't, don't look, look, look right today. I don't like my shirt, whatever excuse, insert the following excuses. And it's always like the ones who are doing that. I get it. It's hard to do video. It's not comfortable, but you, you got to stop caring at some point, um, you know, and then you just build a brand and if you can keep it lo local, it's, it, it, it's so easy. I can't state it enough. Like I, I've seen leads coming in because obviously with these guys, I see what's, what's happening. It's just, I never seen that. Like I've been in car sales for, for a bit. I've been in the industry. Like people are like coming in, like, so what can you sell me? It's, it's super powerful. So I know, I know it's a lot, <laughs> but I hope you guys, you know, I've been, uh, no, I, I'd like to have some questions. If you guys have anything for me, I'm available for that. So I'll let, I'll let you uh, take over, Alex. You're on mute. Sure, thank you. Hey, uh, so we do have a, a few questions. Um, the first of which uh, that I'm going to ask is, is it a bad idea to have one TikTok account for an entire group, perhaps many different rooftops? Um. Always depends how you want to brand it and eventually send traffic from. So, TikTok has a limit. You you, you need ten, uh, you need a thousand followers to have a link in your profile. So if you do that, you can always like if you have the means to do a specific landing page and say you know what like maybe a splash page with all different you know dealerships or just go through a funnel that you know that like maybe a quiz funnel that helps you identify who's your potential buyer. That might be a good idea, but you know, it's not, um, it's not a bad idea to, to maybe start for the group and then maybe see if some of your stores want to pick up and create one of their own, but you can, there's, I, I don't see any negative point about starting one for the groups, like as a, as a, as a foundation, if that makes sense. All That's right. what I would do at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
another question here. Uh, are there restrictions uh, or, or on phrases that are offering like leases or, or anything like that, maybe financial that uh, might lead to like shadow banning or, or, or that kind of thing? Like I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something I've been using in every advertising marketing, every, everything I've, I've been doing. Like if the goal is to generate leads, you want to keep a specific part of the information or key information out of the picture. So people have a reason to reach out to you that real that will increase the amount of leads and qualified leads you'll get, but also reduce your exposure to that kind of like those, those that kind of thing, you know, because there's always you can't be spending like, you know, the, those fi fine prints and like ads and stuff you, you see for automotive, you, you can't be spending like 90% of your video just reading this. So I would try to be as vague as possible. And anyway, you want to keep away the most you can from really specific offers interest rates uh, i would i would just keep it vague for all these reasons okay good answer uh how frequently should we be posting on tiktok is once a day really enough this is a question from jane it depends how patient you are if you are able to go for five six ten times a day do it as, as long as you can um keep the pace if you let's say you can do i don't know like start of the month you know you're free um and you can do more i suggest you you create some and you schedule them because more and more we can schedule things with tiktok you can schedule videos with tiktok on pc so i suggest you do that as well uh, so you're consistent versus posting like like crazy like i did with my costco video and not after, right? Because then your engagement rates like just drops. You want to you you want to be also like always um, posting new videos, new stuff, so people have a reason to follow. Because when people get to your account and see what you're about, if you've posted like three months ago, um, no matter how many times you did, um, it's going to make a difference if they subscribe or not. Uh, here's a specific question from Robbie. Uh, we had an ad account for TikTok. The commercial business side loses the audio sounds for trends. What do you recommend a yeah. dealer should do? Yeah, um, like there's two types of accounts on 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 TikTok. There's a creator or um, business. So you know there there there's pros and cons to both. But if you want to go ahead and use you know sounds, I would keep away from anything that's trending. Obviously, because your your sounds will be just removed or banned. Um, so you, there, there's a library of music you can use that's more that's allowed. If that makes sense. It's it's not the like yeah. Let, let, let's be honest. It's not the greatest music, but at least you can push your your ads too. So you can always try to find. I know there's some people that are doing some copyright free music. Let's say versions of songs or covers. Um, which are not the originals, but you you can still have a beat. You can do that as well. But honestly, for me, I've been just staying away from using music on these educational videos. Um, it's not much of a value add versus the the potential loss of opportunity for pushing these ads. All right, just a couple more questions question. here. Mm -hmm. uh, are reply videos being sent through DM? Nope, they're posted on the, the for you page and your feed. Okay. But Quick. the person who asked the question gets the, no, the notification. Nice. And when when you go in, in in your video and every single comment you've replied with videos, all these videos are gonna show up within that video thread, which is pretty cool too. That is. Uh do you find uh funny TikToks do better than informative TikToks? Uh like it depends on it depends with it depends which outcome you're looking for. If you're doing 95% funny, let's say I'm going to I'm going to take an example in car sales. There's a guy named Tito. Um he has 1.5 million followers on TikTok and he's selling cars. But he's never talking about anything you know related to offers or promos, but he's only like he he's a comedian. Honestly, he's pretty good. Um I have no idea of what kind of reach and sales he's doing from this in terms of percentage, but you got to be, I just think you got to be wary of what's your style. So if you're really, really funny, please go ahead. But if it's forced and you're struggling being funny, right. maybe it's better being educational, informative. That's that whole being authentic. It's a you don't short want to answer, but uh, I, yeah. 
there's there's a lot to it but i hope this guy answer you is kinda... if you're good at it there <laughs> Yeah, or All just right. like spr- sprinkle it, maybe just, you know, not always that you want to want to do a little bit about edutainment. There you go. Uh, so we're actually going to we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, I'll, we'll go ahead and take uh, the remainder of these questions and we'll include it, the, the Q&A in the uh, email tomorrow. Uh, but just a reminder, this will be sent out as a recording uh, for you tomorrow. Uh, and, and, you know, you can watch it all again and get because there was a lot of uh, information that we covered, a lot of good content, a lot of good uh, tips and tricks to that we covered. So uh, it's definitely worth a, a rewatch or a share or something like that, but that'll be coming tomorrow. Uh, once again, I wanted to thank you, Mark, uh, so much for joining thank us you. today. Um, obviously this ended up being a little bit longer, but there's just so much information and you, you, so many examples that you that you brought forth today. So again, me from Trade Pending, thank you so much for, for uh, joining us on our webinar and talking through. Thank, thank you, Alex, for having me, and thank you, Trade Pending, as well, and uh, especially thanks to you guys who asked uh, questions, those who are trying to figure out how to do it uh, with TikTok. So. so I hope this was helpful. We did go over the time limit, and we had more than 15 questions pending at the end. So if you had more questions for me regarding TikTok and your car dealership, drop a comment below or send me an email at team at autobahnacademy.com. If you'd like to get your hands on the car dealer's TikTok starter pack, head over to autobahnacademy.com slash TikTok. Take it easy. Bye.